When someone has pain, especially in a joint, the go-to diagnosis for that is tendonitis. There are two big problems with that generic diagnosis. Number one is it doesn't tell much of anything that is actually going on with the injury. And number two is it is usually something much worse. In this episode, I share why the pain you might be experiencing from an injury isn't due to inflammation in the tendons, but more likely a bigger problem that could lead to more pain and dysfunction in the future. I hope you learned something new and enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Injuries Explained Project, where we are on a hell of a mission to make chronic injuries obsolete by helping anyone that is injured and in pain get properly educated and informed on all their treatment options so they can have the best possible outcomes without ever having to resort to pain pills, injections, or surgeries, which only make things worse. My name is Dr. Matt Maggio. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the show. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. All of the information presented in this episode is strictly my opinion and in no way, shape, or form should be misinterpreted as concrete medical advice or recommendations. If you're currently injured and in pain, please reach out to a qualified medical practitioner for a full diagnosis. If you've already done that, you haven't got any real answers, you're frustrated as hell, you just want to know what's going on and get down the path to getting your injury fixed and solved, you can reach out to us directly for an injury consultation. All of the information to do that is available in the show notes or wherever you might be consuming this content. Now that we got the boring stuff out of the way, let's get right into the show. What does tendonitis even mean? Um, From the most basic standpoint, it just means that there's inflammation in a tendon. Yeah, pretty simple. And some of the areas in the body that are most common to feel the symptoms of tendonitis are going to be in your Achilles heel, um, the knee, like the top front part of the knee, um, the top of the hamstring, especially where you sit, in the elbow, and then in the shoulder as well. The problem with a diagnosis of tendonitis is it doesn't really answer the question of why there is inflammation in the first place. I talk about this all the time. You, we must know that answer before we ever start the path to fixing an injury. You know, So many people are just like, I have this problem, and then they're like, here's this treatment for it, instead of answering the question of like, why is it happening? Why is there swelling? Why is there inflammation? Why is there pain? We simply just go, oh, it's here, let's jump right into it. It's like I always say, imagine if you took your car to the mechanic, it was having an issue, and the mechanic's just like, yep, let's just start hammering away. They don't run any tests or (laughs) diagnoses on it. And then what happens is you never really know what's going on. You wouldn't accept that with your car, but we accept that all the time with our bodies. So one of the most important factors I look at when I'm evaluating an injury is... Was there trauma or an accident or not? Or does someone do something in their job or their activity or sport where they're like repetitive using stuff? Like maybe they're a single arm athlete or they're working using one arm more than the other or one side more than the other. I wanna look at those factors. And a lot of times when there's no direct trauma and no repetition, you know, repeated repetition going on, usually the area that is hurt or inflamed is the effect It's not the actual cause. In a majority of injury presentations that are falsely labeled as tendonitis, the real problem is still in the tendon, but it's something much worse than just simple inflammation. It's actually what's called degeneration. Now, that word can be a little bit scary, but basically degeneration is a general term that structures wear out before their time, and the problem with degeneration is it gets progressively worse. You tend to see these in bone, cartilage, in the disc, in the tendon as well. And something going on here, like I said in the intro, is it's not tendonitis, it's actually something much worse. It's called a tendinosis. So what is that? So think of your tendons, like a healthy tendon. Think of your tendons if we look at a tendon under like a microscope, a healthy tendon will look like a box of like spaghetti before it's cooked. It's real tough. If we try to put them all together and snap them in half, it would be really hard to do that. That's what a normal healthy tendon 
looks like. A tendinosis, what it actually looks like is it's this area in the tendon where if we look at it under a microscope, it kind of looks like cooked spaghetti. It doesn't look right. So what happens over time is that the, as the tendon gets loaded up from other things that I'm going to cover a little bit later in the episode is this tendinosis starts to lay down to try to buffer the area, but it's not a good quality tendon. You know what I'm going to actually do? I have a video on this. I'll include that in the show notes. It has more of a visual so you can see this as well, like what a normal looks like versus what uh, abnormal looks like so you can get a better idea there. So the, the tendinosis starts to sink in and there's some problems associated with it. When this happens, less blood flow gets in. The tendon becomes weaker and that also becomes more susceptible to tearing and then all the waste product can't get out. So blood can't get in, blood can't get out, weaker and more susceptible to tearing. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. Here's the thing, 95% of full-blown tendon ruptures started as a tendinosis. So what are the clinical signs when it presents with? Like, what would you actually feel when you have a tendinosis? One of them is gonna be, it usually is a lot worse when you're not using it for a long time and then stiff for a while when you first start moving on it. A very common one that I see, especially in the Achilles tendon, is say you've been sleeping and you get up and you're like the first couple steps or maybe the first five minutes walking around the house and you're limping. That's because that tendinosis is starting to get uh, jacked up and causing some problems in there. You can see it as well where you've been sitting for a while, then you start to use it. It really kind of sucks, but as you start to warm it up, it gets better, uh, less symptoms as you go from there. And how does this happen? Like how does a tendinosis form? It doesn't just happen overnight. You don't just get degeneration overnight. It's a process as it goes. So over time, you have your muscles, you have your nerves, you have your fascia. And basically what happens is the body develops scar tissue. Um, it's like glue that makes it weaker and less flexible. I really dove into this a lot in I think episode two, if you wanna really nerd out and find out like what the problem with scar tissue is. But basically what happens is a lot of these problems start in the muscles and the fascia and around the nerves. Now the muscles can't generate the force that they need to, so the force has to go somewhere and where it goes, it usually ends up going to the tendon. So the tendon starts taking on more force. Now it's doing two jobs instead of one. And that's when it starts to wear down. And then suddenly one day, it just pops and produces that agonizing pain in a visit to the orthopedic surgeon to get it repaired. I saw someone back when I played football, like blow out their Achilles. It's so loud, it's so painful for that person. But a lot of these symptoms and signs were there, but a lot of the practitioners ignored it. And here's the thing, after you repair a tendon that was a tendinosis and then ruptured, it's never the same. It's it's never the same. I've never seen like an athlete come back after an Achilles tear or another type of tendon repair that's ever the same. It's it's just not. You can't tie stuff back together and then expect it to be great to go. So what can you do to keep it from happening? Number one is just recognize the signs and symptoms of what's going on. Your body gives you symptoms to tell you it's a problem. It's built into our evolution. Like when you touch the hot stove, you get your hand off of it. It tells you, your body's giving you symptoms for a reason. And so when people are like, ignore the pain, don't pay attention to symptoms, just get rid of the symptoms, you'll be fine. Like that's a big problem because you're eventually gonna have to deal with this problem. Another thing, if you're seeing some of those signs and symptoms like worse with warming up, um, worse with sitting, all that kind of stuff, and then it just is really painful in there, you gotta find a way to reduce the load on the area that you're doing. Maybe take some more rest. Oh my gosh, rest, if I don't take rest, I'm gonna die. No, you're not, you're just doing too much. And then try to maybe like swap out some exercises. A big thing I would do, like say you have some knee um, tendinosis or something in the hamstring, instead of doing like a long run or a long bike, maybe like switch it out for like a Tabata where you're gonna do more force but less time. You know, the big thing you wanna do is limit the amount of time you're under tension instead of trying to do so much and give those tendons a chance to relax. And then lastly is get the muscles, the fascia and the nerves unstuck and treated by an advanced soft tissue practitioner. Uh, the best people to do that specialize in a treatment called myofascial release where they get the proper amount of depth and tension 
into the area, then have you go through a full range of motion that breaks down that scar tissue effectively without having to use instruments or surgery or anything like that. It's very safe. It's very effective. I actually train up a lot of therapists throughout the country and all over the world how to do that. If you want access to one of those, you can send us a message and we'll see if you got someone in your area to get you some good treatment to keep this from becoming a bigger problem down the road. So what not to do when there are signs and symptoms? Number one is don't get a cortisone injection. It actually makes the problem worse down the road and then adds to my conspiracy theory about what's going on in the medical model where these orthopedic surgeons <clears throat> pump people full of cortisone, problem gets worse and they can justify a big expensive surgery down the road. It's a messed up, jacked up system from where we are, but cortisone shots are garbage and so is the, gar and so is the doctor or the practitioner giving there. They don't do anything. They might temporarily make you feel better, but they're not fixing anything and they actually cause the tendon to get worse. They've actually shown that in studies. People that have multiple cortisone shots and injections are more likely to get a rupture of the tendon because that's what happens is you ignore the symptoms with a cortisone shot, all that scar tissue's there, that tendon still gets beat up and you might feel good, but you didn't fix anything and then boom, things explode one day and we're like, how did this happen? It happened because you didn't set yourself up for a good thing and the doctor really kind of screwed you over too and didn't give you the information that you need. Um, Number two is don't jump into surgery right away, especially if there's no direct trauma or repetitive job motions. I covered that in episode four about the idea of surgery, should you have surgery or not have surgery based on a lot of factors. Hey, if you're one of those people that you just full out blow it out, phew, there's not a lot you can do there. You got to go get the surgery. But if you're on that verge where you're like, you think there's a problem there, you're getting multiple cortisone shots, you're doing a lot of dumb shit that's not helping you start thinking about that. Like, don't just jump in. You might go in there and be like, yep, you have a partial tear and you need surgery right away instead of figuring out like why you have that partial tear. Uh, number three is don't go to physical therapy to strengthen and stretch the area. I covered that in episode five. What you need is that tissue cleaned up by a soft tissue specialist. Like I said, a myofascial release specialist that can go in there and clean up the tissue. And lastly, don't ignore the symptoms and think it'll all just go away on its own. You know, I always, people always say you can wish in one hand and crap in the other and see what fills up first because we live in this denial place where, oh, I just have these symptoms and I want them to go away. Your body is telling you there's a problem for a reason. You can either listen to it or ignore it, but eventually you're going to have to deal with it and confront it down the road. So a couple take homes from the episode. Uh, once again, listen to your body, what it tells you. Pain is your body trying to get your attention that something is wrong. Number two, don't take advice from someone just because they're a doctor or some self-proclaimed expert. If they can't tell you exactly why the pain and symptoms are happening or just have some treatment to get rid of the pain, but they don't improve any of your function or get your tissue healthy, stay away from them. Number three, never, ever, 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 ever get an injection. That just makes things worse. And lastly, be proactive in your own health and getting a resolution because nobody's going to care more about your health than you will. So if you like the show, please support it by sharing it with others. If you have any questions or topics you want me to cover, um, send them over my way and email them directly to us. I'm happy to help. If you're looking for real answers about what may be going on with your own injury and you're tired of getting jerked around by the medical system, then please reach out and request an injury consultation with our team. All of that information is available in the show notes. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.